your space. I'm your tool. Take me out your box and use me, Lord. This is your word. God, somebody need this word right now. And God, I pray that you will bless them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to talk for a few minutes as a spiritual guy. Willing to go through it. Willing to go through it. If you don't mind, turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, neighbor. I'm, going right I'm going through hell right now. But I'm willing to go through it. I'm willing to go through it. <laughs> you don't mind, turn to somebody else and say, Neighbor, neighbor. I'm going through a little something right now. But I'm willing to go through it. <laughs> what are you willing to endure for God to change your life? How long are you willing to hang in there even when it don't look good? Are you willing to face the reality that the problem just might be you? Uh, are you willing to be exposed for who you really are? No longer hiding behind the mask. Me, honestly, I don't know what could be more life changing than coming face to face with God. Having him expose you to yourself. Somebody in the house this morning needs that kind of encounter today. We, we, we good at hiding or keeping ourselves from being exposed to those around us. But we love the truth of the matter is that you need to all of us if we're going to go there, we have to be exposed to ourselves. We need a God encounter. Somebody say a God encounter. God. Uh, yeah, you can continue to live a life built around your imagination or your hypocrisy, or you can face your God moment. Uh, your God moment, beloved, it won't promote you. <laughs> but it will expose you. It won't expose you to others, but it will expose you to yourself. Coming to grips with the reality of who we are can leave us very unsettled and restless. Is there a, don't raise your hand, but is there a witness in the house? Uh, that's what happened to Jacob prior to his midnight moment. He, he became unsettled and and restless, and, and it was time for Jacob uh, uh, to return home to Canaan. Now, you remember Canaan? Uh, that was the, the scene of the crime. That was the place where, where, where Jacob, he, 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 he deceived his brother, and he, he, he stole his brother's birthright from him. And he saw was so angry with him. You know how it is when something belongs to you and somebody else get it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his brother Esau became angry with him. And, and then Jacob found himself on the run. But God said, no, it's time for you to go back home now. Uh, but look, we can never come to grips with who we really are without our midnight moment. Our midnight moment with God. I know we love to sing the song, It Was Late in the Midnight Hour. Uh, God, He's going to turn around. But, but I served notice before God can turn it around, beloved, God got to turn you around. Yeah. Yeah, he, he got to turn your mind around. He got, he got to turn uh, your attitude uh, uh, around. He, he has to turn uh, your perspective around before he can turn your circumstances around. It's amazing how we want God to turn situations around in our life, but we remain the same. I wish somebody would explain to me where that, explain to me where that kind of theology came from. Uh, God, God, 
make my life better. God, God make my circumstances better, but God leave me just like I am. No, no, no. It doesn't work like that. But you've got to have uh, your God moment. And, 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 and Jacob uh, uh, was, uh, uh, Jacob had gone through past uh, emotional stirring, uh, uh, beloved, that he was going through an emotional stirring, uh, and it, it no longer provided him with the excuses that once worked. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's easy for us to come up with excuses uh, for how we act like we act. Yeah. Okay, don't get quiet on me. Right. This early in the sermon. Right. And, and we, we, we all can find excuses for why we do what we do, why we say what we say. And it kind of gives us a little comfort zone. Uh, you, you understand. Uh, we expect people to understand uh, that, that, that we got an issue and that's why I act like I act. That's why I think like I think, because I got some issues, and I, and I need you uh, to understand that. And I, but Jacob was going through an emotional stirring, beloved, and I come to tell you, I, I'm a living witness, emotional stirring does not work. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you mean, Pastor? Yeah, you can live all, you can live like you want to live Monday through Saturday and, and want to come up in here on Sunday morning and get an emotional stirring up, then go right back to the world and begin to live like you was living once again. Now, come up in here and get a little happy on Sunday morning. Get a little goosebumps on Sunday morning and get a little emotional stirring but then return back to the same sin that we left on Saturday night. Now, the devil is a liar. Uh, uh, emotional stirring doesn't work, beloved. Emotional stirring uh, only manipulates our character traits. Uh, what are you saying, preacher? Yeah, whatever it is in you, uh, emotional stirring yeah. only stirs it up. You ever yeah. stirred up coffee? You yeah. ever stirred up tea? Uh, and if you got too much in there, after you get through stirring it, it just settles back to the bottom. Ourselves uh, in a, in another emotional stirring. Uh, but, beloved, I come to serve notice this morning. Uh, the ingredients that ain't no good for us, uh, it got to get out. Amen. Uh, somebody say, I got to get it out. Okay. Yeah, I just, it's not enough for me to uh, go through emotional stirring. And Jacob realized that in his midnight moment, I got to get better. Jacob. Understood that I can't go back home like this. Uh -huh. I, I, I got to face myself uh, and I got to face my God. And I, before I can go back and face my people and my brother, I, I, I got to have my midnight moment. Yeah. Can I set the stage for you? Yeah. God had blessed Jacob. Uh, God had shown Jacob increase. Uh, the Bible says that Jacob had two wives. Uh, yet the Bible says that he had 11 children. Uh, the Bible says that Jacob had cows and cattle and, and sheep and goats. And can't you see the increase on his life? But when he left him and he didn't have all this stuff, uh, God blessed him while he was on the run. Uh, beloved, God blessed Jacob in the midst of his mess. I, 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 let me check the room. Anybody know what kind of blessing that is? You know when you ain't necessarily living like you're supposed to live, but God still make the way out of the way? Uh huh. You doing yeah. anything you big and bad enough to do, but God still opens the door of opportunity for you. God still gives you increase. God still gives you protection, but even though you got everything you want, you ain't got no peace of mind. Uh huh. You got all the money. You got your wife. You got your children. You got your business. You got your house. You got status. You got everything. But you ain't got no peace of mind. In Genesis 31 and 3, God said, Go back home where you were born. I'll be with you. Jacob is blessed with family and material gain. But he's unsettled. Jacob realized that he couldn't go back home the same way he left. Right. Mm -hmm. Some might say, well, no, Pastor, he good. Look at all that stuff he 
got, but he the same Jacob. Mm. Oh, you missed that. Mm. <laughs> you missed that. Mm. You see, young people, can I help you, young people? See, young people, the world will always teach you to gauge your life by what you accumulate. Right. All right. Mm. All right. Mm. Mm. Okay, I'm going to say that again, because I believe that slipped past some adults. <laughs> See, the world teaches you to gauge your life by what you accumulate, what you ride in, what you live in, what you put on your feet, what mm. you put on your back, how much you spend on your do, um, how much you have cut, brothers, uh, you, you know, how you look, do you have this, do you have that? You know, that's how the world teaches us to gauge our life. But the things you accumulate won't give you character. What you look like won't give you integrity. Come on, preacher. The world we live in will tell you out the window with your reputation. Just turn on the TV. Uh huh. Reality TV says, don't worry about your reputation. See, you can act the fool and get a few dollars, and that's how you can gauge your life. Young people, uh -huh. don't gauge your life by what you accumulate. Jacob came face to face with himself and God and realized I can't go back home like this. Jacob, Jacob, Jacob was afraid. He told him, your brother Esau is coming. And he has 400 men with him. Mm -hmm. Jacob became frantic. Panicked. Yeah. And he prayed to God. And I, I, I can appreciate Jacob here because Jacob was honest with God and himself. God, I really don't deserve all that you have blessed me with. God, I really should have everything that you have given to me. He prayed to the Lord. But this is when he saw the boat again. He reverted back to his nature. Because the Bible says he started putting together a, a, a little care package for Esau. He took some goats from over here, he took some sheep from over here, and he took some other animals from over here. He said, now what you do, now you take these and you go up ahead of us, and I'm hoping that this gift will make my brother feel a little bit better. Because yeah. see, I think my brother is out to kill me. Because I think he's still mad because I stole the birthright way back then. So I need you to go up ahead of us and, and, and hoping that will appease him. But let me, if you're going to make it through your midnight moment, I want to share three things with you. And the first thing I want to share with you, you have to get tired of yourself. Ooh, I hope somebody wrote that down. <laughs> if you're going to make it through your midnight moment, you have got to get tired of yourself. Can I show it to you in the text? In verse 22, it says, But during the night he got up and took his two wives and his two maid servants and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. Beloved, the Jabbok is a body of water that empties into the Jordan River. Jabbok means, beloved, to empty or to be emptied. Jacob came to the point in his life when he was ready to rid himself of himself. If you're going to make it through your midnight moment, beloved, you're going to have to rid yourself of your present uh, thought process. Uh, if you're going to make it through your midnight moment, uh, you have to be tired of who you are. Presently, are. But the issue is that many of us, we ain't tired yet. If, if, if we say we tired of going through the hell we're going through. We say we tired of going through these trials and tribulations. Uh, we say we tired of being on the roller coaster. You tired of everything but you. You tired? I'm tired of my husband. I'm, I'm tired. So you just emotionally stirred. But are you ready to empty yourself out of yourself? And beloved, when you refuse to cross your Jabbat, life can leave you a settling and restless 
But Jacob said, no, enough is enough. I need less of me and more of God. Is there a witness in the house? Don't raise your hand, but you can declare, look, you know what? I'm about sick of me. I, I know I'm talking about I'm sick of some other stuff and some other stuff, but you know what? When I really think about it, I am about sick of me. Huh? When I look around and look, look where I am, you know what? Maybe it ain't nobody else's fault. Maybe it is me. Huh? Huh? Don't you know that you can't put a circle in a square? It just won't work, beloved. Don't you think, don't think that you can be full of yourself and make it through your midnight moment. Uh, so tell your neighbor, lady, yeah. it's time to lose ourselves. Ourself. Point number two. At some point, you have to decide who the authority is going to be. At some point, you have to decide who is going to be the authority in your life. Verse 25. When the man saw that he couldn't get the best of Jacob, as they wrestled, he deliberately threw Jacob's hip out the country. Now, if you ain't had no hip on it, you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> If you play sports, you probably know what I'm talking about. Yes. The man said, let me go. It's daybreak. Now watch this. Jacob, in the midst of his pain, in the midst of his hip being out of joint, said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. Jacob realized that as long as he was the authority in his life, life is unfulfilled. And I come to serve those you can have all the stuff you want. You can live in the biggest house or the smallest house. You can drive the nicest car or the raggediest car. If you are the authority in your life, you can put the biggest smile on your face. Life for you is unfulfilled. Because stuff, beloved, cannot fulfill us. Everything get old. I don't care how shiny it is. I don't care how new it is. Everything gets old. His life was filled with family and materials. But he had no peace. The sins of his past were still haunting him. He just couldn't get past it. Watch this. Life had moved on. Esau had moved on. But Jacob, he couldn't move on. In verse 7, it says Jacob was scared. He was very scared. And when he found out his brother was on the way with 400 men, he panicked. And he divided his family and his stuff. And I want to help somebody here. Beloved, how God going to be? The authority in your life. And when life gets a little uncomfortable for you, uh, the first thought you have uh, is the worst thought you have. Uh, explain that to me. Uh, how is Jesus the King of Kings uh, and the Lord of Lords? Uh, how can God sit high and look low? Uh, and when something happens, your first thought uh, is your worst thought. Uh, the devil is a liar. Uh, there's a story about a man that he was walking past a tattoo shop uh, and he decided that he was going to go inside and uh, he was asking the owner about the tattoos. He said, what's your best seller? Uh, and the tattoo owner said, this one right here. Uh, and the tattoo read, born to lose. Uh, he said, this is our best seller right here. Uh, people like to get born to lose. Uh, on their chest and arms. Uh, and the man said, I don't understand why would persons uh, want to get born to lose tattooed uh, on their chest. Uh, and the owner said, see, it's tattooed on the mind uh, before they tattoo it on the body. Uh, I don't know who I'm preaching to, uh, but my love, however you think, uh, that's what you can expect your life to be. Uh, and I got talking to you 
know you need to be you need to be weary and leery about how you think. You see, Jacob had prayed for God to do something about his situation, but he returned back to the same nature. And if the truth be told, many of us in the house this morning, we don't talk with the Lord. We don't walk the floor all night long. And the next day, we reverted back to some of the same old habits because it was tattooed on my mind. And I don't know who I'm talking to. And some of y'all need to quit getting these tattoos tattooed all over your body. Could you let the world know just what you think about yourself? Excuse me, I still love you. Young people, be, be, be careful about what you think. Be careful about what you believe because your thoughts, beloved, they become your words. You want to know why you talk the way you do? Because you got a tattoo on your mind. Your words become your actions. You act out what you think. You want to know why you act like you do? You got a tattoo on your mind. Your words, your actions become your habits. The character is a reflection of your thoughts. Your habits become your values. A negative thought process will always lead you to taking the low road. Your values, they become your destiny. The Bible says that as a man thinketh, so is he. With the prayers, the righteous don't work. God ain't got but one thing to do, and that's to break you down. And some of us wondering what's going on in our life. Right this very minute, you just going through the breaking process. Don't you worry about baby. Hang on in there. Be praying. 
intolerance.